Hi, my name is Easter. Welcome to the Easter Basket, and this is the Rift Guide series. So we're here at Tomb 3 Escalation. Rift 4 just came out a few days ago, uh, and Rift 4 is basically the entire reason that these videos are made in the first place. These are just off-the-cuff discussions showing new players uh, how to get these challenges done as fast as possible if you're, like, uh, unlike me and you don't have a whole lot of time to play. Uh... We're really here to help you get through these challenges as fast as possible uh, so you can get the rewards, the Rift Awards, as fast as possible since it would take you six months to get those Rift Awards before they were released in the store if you were interested in any of them. So uh, with the shape of this web, we usually start with Killer first, but I'm going to start in the top left because it would make my OCD burn if I did not. Uh, so the first one's called Fight Back, Stun the Killer 10 times. Uh, so stunning... Uh, can be done two ways. You can either pallet stun or you can stun with a perk, uh, which are specifically head on and decisive strike. So uh, there's a little bit of luck involved with this because if you play against somebody like Deathslinger, uh, Huntress, if you play range killers, you're not really going to get the opportunity to stun them. Uh, you'll have to force the stun to happen with decisive strike, which can only happen once in a match. Um, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, otherwise, you could use head-on against them. Um, use a combination like head-on and quick and quiet. Uh, head-on is a Jane perk, by the way. Uh, and Decisive Strike is a Kate Denson perk. Uh, so you'll... Um... Oh, excuse me, it's not a Kate Denson perk. <laughs> I missed that. Anyways, uh, you need to use either head-on, Decisive Strike, or um, Stun the Killer with a Pallet Stun. So go for broke. I sabotage three hooks while in the killer's terror radius. Uh, complete this challenge in a single trial. In a single trial. Uh, so you definitely want to bring a toolbox for this um, because you'll need to do it as fast as possible. Basically, you want to wait. Um, follow the killer around if you can or wait until somebody is hooked near you. Uh, when somebody is hooked near you, go to the nearest hook, pop it. Um, as long as you can hear the heartbeat, no matter how faint, uh, it will count towards this. Uh, and notably, if their terror radius is huge, uh, for example, Legion is in this, uh, somebody is using something like um, Legion's iridescent button. Whenever they frenzy, their radius covers the whole map. That will work too. Uh, as long as you hear the heartbeat, uh, you can use a toolbox and take two seconds and break, break three hooks. This one shouldn't be that difficult. So iridescent age, uh, this shows up all the time. Uh, this could be a killer or a survivor perk. That's what this little entity emblem means, is that it's a neutral. Earn 15 emblems of iridescent quality. Uh, this you should get just by normally playing the game. Uh, the easiest iridescent emblem to get for a survivor by far is altruism. So heal people, pull them off the hook safely, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, that would be my suggestion. Uh, otherwise, just playing the game, and especially if you play in like a Swift Squad, uh, this one shouldn't be that hard to get if you're a survivor. Uh, if you're a killer, this is a little bit harder, um, but just play whatever role you're comfortable with, and then this this should come naturally. Classic Kate. So if you're familiar with the Adept achievements, this is very close to what that is. So instead of getting, uh, so instead of two pipping, the result is that you simply have to escape using at least. Kate's three basic perks. Unlike the achievements, though, you can use a fourth one. So I would recommend using uh, an exhaustion perk. You could also use decisive strike. You could also use borrowed time. Uh, any of those will work. But just which, use whichever fourth perk you're most comfortable with, and then uh, use Kate's three basic perks. Um, and that should be easy. Uh, Kate escaped, chased by the killer for a total of 45 seconds, and escaped the trial as Kate Denson. This one... Um, also has a little bit of luck involved because if you're playing against a ranged killer, it's a little bit more difficult for the game to register that you're being chased until you're already hit for the first time. So if you're against a melee killer, he'll walk up, he'll look at you, and then the game will register, okay, it's a chase for a couple seconds before you get hit for the first time. If you're against a ranged killer, that's not the way it is. So there is a little bit of luck involved. Um, one of the easier ways to do this is to use a offering for Auto Haven Wreckers. Uh, and then in the center of most Auto Haven Wreckers maps, there is usually a sequence of loops in a row. There'll be like four or five pallets right next to each other, uh, which will lead into jungle gyms, which will lead into the main garage building, etc., etc. Um, and that's probably the easiest thing to do if you want to use the key offering. 
I would recommend uh, doing that uh, so you can get the 45 seconds of chasing and then escaping. Next one is blindsided, blind the killer eight times. So an important thing to note, uh, this would in, this gets into a discussion with flashlights. Accuracy is the most important thing with flashlights. Purple and green flashlights suck. Do not use them. Use a yellow flashlight, use a battery add-on, um, use, oh goodness, I'm forgetting. I think it's a filament add-on that increases the accuracy. Put those together. Uh, and you'll find that you get blinds a lot easier. I see a lot of people trying to do this challenge with a purple flashlight and like a lens. Those two things combined will make it much, much, much harder to blind the killer, believe it or not. So don't do that. Take a yellow flashlight, take a battery, take a filament, uh, and this should be relatively easy to do. Just wait till the killer goes to stomp a pallet, uh, blind them. If they don't move their face, then you can blind them multiple times in a row. All right, we're gonna go down here to Life Giver. Heal a total of eight health states of any survivor. Uh, basically bring a med kit into the challenge. So if you're injured, then you'll be able to heal yourself. Otherwise bring perks like we'll make it, botany knowledge, uh, botany knowledge self-care in particular, if you don't wanna bring a med kit for yourself. Um, uh, we'll make it is whenever you pull somebody off the hook, you'll heal them 100% faster. It's very, very fast. I'd recommend that perk. It's a neutral perk, it's awesome. Um, this one should be pretty easy. Uh, you could also, I would also recommend using Bond so you can see where other survivors are if you're playing by yourself, so you can run to them and heal them if they're injured. Strategic Alliance. Perform a cooperative action for 360 seconds. Uh, this is by far easiest to do if you're playing with one friend, because if you're playing with one, uh, at least one friend, then you can just sit on a gin. It takes about 63, 66 seconds when you're working with one other person to do a gin. Uh, do five gins. This is by far the easiest way to get this uh, to get this done. Uh, you can cut the time if you do a co-op action helping to heal each other. If you have a little heal party in a match, um, you could sort of quote unquote farm the killer in that way if you're not really wor worrying it if you're not really worried about winning the match you can just get three people injured um run to a corner of the map and co-op heal each other and that should give you about you know seven to eight seconds of of healing for each person or co-op actions uh so it shouldn't be too difficult it's just relatively time consuming which you'll notice is a theme uh, for about half the challenges in here a uh, blood debt Unhook a survivor who unhooked you earlier in the trial three times. Must unhook them safely. Luckily, this is not in a single trial. Uh, but perks like Borrowed Time are... Um, I highly recommend using the perk Borrowed Time. It's a bill perk. It is objectively the best perk in the game. Uh, whenever you unhook somebody, it is guaranteed to be a safe unhook unless they just stand still and let themselves get hit twice. Um, it is super, super good. Uh, you also have to be hooked first um, for someone to unhook you so um, unless you're playing against somebody who notoriously camps the hook like pig or wraith i would recommend just going out and initiating a chase with the killer as fast as possible to distract them get your other people time to do gens and then if you go down first just pay attention see who unhooks you and then try to unhook them whenever they get unhooked and that should be relatively simple Dwight's Dominance. Escape one trial while using the perk Bond, Prove Thyself, and Leader. Complete this challenge in a single trial, of course, because it's only one trial. This is Dwight's uh, alternative for uh, this Kate challenge, except D Dwight's perks are a lot more eminently useful. Um, if you are doing a gen with somebody else, you'll find that it's, uh, as long as you have these perks equipped, it it goes so fast, um, especially with proving myself on. But uh, as long as you have these three perks on, again, use your decisive strike, use borrowed time, use your exhaustion perk, uh, especially something like sprint burst will help you. Because uh, a lot of times if you're on a gen with somebody else and you sprint burst away, then the killer will just go on somebody else. It'll help you escape. Do what you gotta do. Take a key if you need to. Um, that's all I have for that one. 
Dwight's Fright, tied within 10 meters of the killer without being caught for a total of 30 seconds, and then escape the, twa the, twi the trial as Dwight Fairfield. So this is an extension of the previous Rift Challenge, which is where you had to hide for 60 seconds in a single trial, but you didn't have to escape. That one was awful. This one is much more doable, uh, but I still don't like it because being within 10 meters of the killer for 30 seconds basically means um, what you do, the guide for this, is that you um, walk behind the killer, you follow the killer around, you wait until they down one of your allies, and then you walk up to them when they pick your ally up and just walk behind them as they walk to the hook and then hide around them when they hook the survivor, uh, when they hook your friend. And then if you do that probably three times, depending on how far the hook is away, uh, this challenge should be done. So it may take you a couple tries, um, depending on how aware the killer is, but it shouldn't be too challenging of a thing to do. One more time, succeed at eight consecutive skill checks. Um, it honestly depends on the killer, but this shouldn't be too difficult. Um, if you need to take a toolbox that gives you super wide skill check windows, um, be on a gen with Dwight with Prove Yourself too. Um, but in general, this is not a this is a throwaway uh, throwaway challenge. This should be extremely easy for you to do. All you have to do is be able to sit on a gen long enough to get eight consecutive skill checks. So if you're on a gen by yourself, um, this should be a shoe in. All right, let's go back over here and start at the top for killer. So earn 150,000 blood points. Again, this is a general perk. Uh, what does this count? So this counts any blood point boosting perks that you have. So if you have, we're gonna live forever, we're gonna farm forever, as I like to mean it's called as survivor. If you have barbecue and chili uh, as killer, both of those contribute to this number. Also, if you have things like survivor pudding or um, survivor cake whatever it's called the birthday cake thing uh, that also works contributes to this what doesn't contribute to this are daily challenges and challenge rewards from this uh this rift none of that applies so it should be relatively easy especially if you're playing killer this is at most three games uh if you have decent games and you're using 100 percent blood point booster uh, otherwise it'll be um, up to about five games got you interrupting graph six survivors so there is a special technique dedicated servers does make this a little bit difficult but there is a special technique to getting a grab so what you want to do is you want to uh when you're chasing behind somebody and they're about to vault and you're right behind them instead of lunging and going for the swing what you want to do is you want to walk right up next to the window and then as they're through the middle of their animation you just want to tap in one don't lunge just tap in one and you'll grab them right off the the edge of the window it's not too difficult a thing to do but you need to be able to get in range for them to get in the window which might not be the easiest thing to do uh this is one of those it'll just naturally happen you just need to know the technique to make it happen as killer when the opportunity does arise so this goes at a decent speed Otherwise, this is just a little bit more of a grindy challenge. Property damage. Damage a generator or destroy a drop pallet 50 times. 50 times. So honestly, if you don't, if you don't have a whole lot of time, what I would recommend is simply playing Wraith. He's a base killer. Um, use Windstorm so you can chase survivors around and force them to drop pallets a lot use one of his windstorm add-ons and then use uh one of his other add-ons which i'm blanking uh what the names of them are for the moment but they are add-ons that make you break pallets much faster when you're stealth so you can use windstorm run around uh, make a survivor drop a pallet stealth and then you can literally kick a pallet especially if you have the brutal strength per perk in like a quarter a third of a second uh otherwise you can simply use that add-on you'll kick it extremely quickly Otherwise, you'll just get this naturally playing killer. You typically, you'll probably break like six, seven pallets in a single game, even if you're not trying to. Excuse me. So just play the game normally uh, if you care at all about winning. If you don't, use Wraith. That's what I would recommend. Huntress's Instincts. Finish a trial with no more than one living survivor while using the perks Beast of Prey, Territorial Imperative, and Hex 
Huntress's Lullaby. So this is like, again, like the Epidep Challenge over here for Survivor, except Huntress's native perks are pretty universally useless. Now Huntress's Lullaby can be useful, but if you're playing against good survivors, it could also help them get, you, get the gens done faster, which isn't very fun. Um, but again, fourth perk, I would just recommend throwing like barbecue and chili uh, if you have it. Throw um, throw some information perk in there. Whispers is a general perk if you know how to use it. Um, ruin you can use, corrupt intervention. Uh, any perk that helps you either slow down the game or identify where survivors are will really help you to get this challenge done. And luckily you only have to kill three people. So if necessary, um, use the Azarov's Resting Place add-ons. One of the most killer-sided set of maps in the game. Use those. Uh, throw on barbecue and chili or something on this, go to town uh, until you can get that those three kills. Savagery, hit 15 survivors with the Huntress's hatchets. Complete this challenge in a single trial. So the easiest way to do this is to use the, uh, like the haft add-ons, the ones that make you uh, reduce the cooldown in between hatchets, and then the one that reduces the cockback time if you're not very experienced with Huntress. Uh, what this lets you do is when you find somebody you can cock the hatchet back much faster and throw it because that usually uh, tends to be the aspect of huntress that people are a lot less um, familiar with and it also will catch people off guard when you go to loop them um, just basically never left click as long as you go into a game never left click um, after one or two games you should be able to get this um, even if you have to just cock the hatchet back when you're right in front of them and then just hit them point blank this shouldn't be that difficult to do None shall survive. Kill all survivors in a trial one time by any means. If you are not very familiar with Killer, use an add-on called an Ebony Mori. Um, what that does is whenever you hook somebody, you can then, uh, and they get pulled off the hook, the next time you down them, you can then kill them instantly. And you can do that for all, for, for all four survivors. Um, you can... If you don't agree with the use of those add-ons, like I personally don't, you can simply just play a game until you get a 4K. It's not that big of a deal. Um, otherwise, if you just want to get it done as fast as possible and use an Ebony Mori, um, people might get salty about it. It really doesn't matter. It's in the game. Have fun. Uh, get it done if you need to. All right, for the bottom side, knockout, knock down 12 survivors. So all this means is that you have to put them on the ground. So if you have insta-down people, if you have a uh, plague in particular would be really good at this, uh, Billy would be good at this. Um, in general, if you're just playing killer, you're gonna get this really fast regardless of what you do. Even in like the worst killer games I ever had when I was starting, I would at least down like three or four people. So uh, you'll get this in probably two, at least two or three games. It is not very difficult to do. Gold run, earn three emblems of gold quality or better. Again, this is a general perk because it has the entity symbol. Um, play whatever role you're comfortable with. Three golds is not very hard to get. Have a halfway decent game, you'll get this challenge. Diverse despair, hook 20 different survivors. Now, for this one, you really want to pay attention to the true goal of Dead by Daylight, and that's getting four barbecue and chili stacks. If you don't have barbecue and chili, uh, barbecue and chili, every time you hook a person, it gives you a blood point bonus. Uh, if you hook all four people, that's 100% bonus blood points. Um, this will, at minimum, take five different games to do, and hooking all four separate survivors in a trial shouldn't be all that difficult. Every once in a while, you'll get um, you'll get a trial where the one-fourth person is like a blendette who is just impossible to discover, that's fine. If you have to play an additional game, you have to play an additional game, but this is just one of those grindy ones that's just gonna take you at least five games no matter what you do. Deadly Pursuit, chase survivors for a total of 600 seconds. Now this is one thing that new players definitely should not have a big deal with, because if, you, if you're playing a game, uh, 600 seconds is 10 minutes. Uh, so it's 10 minutes of chasing. If you are, a new killer um you will probably get this in like one or two games regardless because the games last 10 to 15 minutes um and you should be chasing a survivor for uh two thirds to the entirety of the game so this should definitely not be an issue 
uh, and this isn't something that you have to especially worry about getting, um, except I would recommend against using uh, playing people like Destiny or Huntress because the chase timer doesn't start um, until you're much closer usually. So I would recommend using a melee killer if you really were concerned in min-maxing this, but uh, other than that, I wouldn't worry about it. Teenage Rebellion finish a trial with no more than one living survivors while using the perks to Squirts, Mad Grit, and Iron Maiden. So luckily, um, one of the perks in Legion's Adept Challenge is Discordance. Discordance is an information perk, which means you can use um, Barbecue and Chili, you can use Enduring, you can use Brutal Strength. Um, you can use a whole bunch of perks, um, fourth perks, uh, to get this done. If you really wanted to, you could throw Noed in here. Uh, Noed wouldn't work as well for Huntress, but you could throw Noed, um, throw Noed on in here. Uh, if you're missing just that one survivor towards the end, you think two might escape, uh, just just use Noed if you're really concerned about getting this challenge done, especially if you're a newer player, since it's a neutral perk. Uh, so you can fill that in on Legion. Feral Carnage. Hit survivors five times in a single use of Feral Frenzy as the Legion. So you might be asking how you do this. Well, uh, if you are, if you hit somebody in a Frenzy as Legion, you can see where the other people are. Now the other people will show up as long as they haven't mended. So if you hit somebody and they mend, their heartbeat will again show up as long as you've hit somebody else. So what you can do is you can either hit all four survivors and hit the last survivor twice or you can hit say three survivors and you have a really long frenzy duration you're using two frenzy duration add-ons you can run back to the original person if they've mended uh and chain off of them again so um, i'll repeat that in case it wasn't clear what you can do is you can either hit all four people once and then hit the last person twice or you can hit people um, and just basically follow the heartbeats. Everyone who has a heartbeat will count and will not cancel your Feral Frenzy. And with that, that is all for this Rift Guide. I hope you guys can get this done relatively quickly. These challenges can be pretty grindy, but I have faith in you. You can do it. Uh, and thanks for watching, guys. I hope you learned something.